Yo, what's poppin' guys? Blaze Bowman here with Trumpet Hacks. Ya boy is back. Today, I've got a very special video for y'all. We are talking about the top 10 trumpet players of all time. The legends that you emulate daily. Make sure to stay tuned. They're not who you think. Your mind is about to be blown. All right, real quick, Bobros, answer the questions right up there. You are gonna shape the future of the trumpet world. Before we proceed, there are two rules. Rule number one, top 10 does not necessarily mean the most technically proficient player. And this is to prevent the list from being only classical trumpet players. Trumpet is a chameleon. Trumpet fits into many genres, and these are the guys who lead the trumpet world. Rule number two, you cannot consider yourself the best. I'm sorry guys, you need to put that trumpet ego aside for a couple minutes. If I can do it, so can you. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. The top 10 trumpet players of all time. Number 10, Doc Severinsen. Kicking off our number 10 spot is the legend himself, Doc Severinsen. Born on July 7th, 1927, Doc is one of the greats. Originally, he insisted on playing trombone though. Then, he switched to trumpet. Good choice, my friend. Now, Doc's success didn't stop there. Going on to lead the Tonight Show band for 25 years. 25 years, that's longer than most of us have been alive. Doc is still touring at the fresh age of 87, and he still sounds amazing, so show Doc some love. Number nine, Chuck Mangione. Coming in super hot at number nine is the coolest cat of them all, Chuck Mangione. Reigning flugelhorn champ Chuck Mangione is most known for his number one hit, Feels So Good. Chuck's exposure skyrocketed when he performed Give It All You Got at the 1980 Winter Olympics. Funniest thing about Chuck is he was a regular character on the popular show, King of the Hill. Now, Chuck was a great sport about this, even going as far as naming one of his songs after Peggy Hill. For Chuck's extremely happy music and amazing influence on the rest of the trumpet and jazz world, he proudly claims number nine. Number eight, Chet Baker. Coming in at number eight is the coolest cat of them all, Chet Baker. Born in Oklahoma as Chesney Henry Baker, Chet sparked a revolution that changed jazz forever. Chet's silky smooth tone complements his flawless voice. Chet revolutionized the trumpet, innovating a delicate, somber tone that you can't help but feel. Here's where Chet is the goat. In 1966, Chet was jumped. Aside from the general wounds you'd expect, Chet sustained severe cuts to his lips and had his front teeth knocked out. Chet could not play. His embouchure was ruined. Everyone thought he was done for. That's where you're wrong. Chet spent months adapting to dentures and developing a new embouchure. Chet was a true fighter and proved them all wrong. Good job, Chet. Number seven, Maurice Andre. Coming in at hot number seven is Maurice Andre, the father of the piccolo trumpet. Now, if you've listened to Maurice, it's pretty apparent that he's one of the greatest players of all time, even being recognized by his peers such as Bud Herseth as the greatest classical trumpet player of all time. But it wasn't always this way. While studying music, Maurice's professor was unimpressed and beat Maurice out of frustration. Maurice returned just weeks later and flawlessly performed all 14 characteristic studies out of the back of the Arbens. Talk about showing up your superiors. That's a legendary feat. Number six, Miles Davis. Miles Davis, the most influential jazz artist in history and music as a whole. At age nine, Miles received his first trumpet, much to his mother's dismay preferring him to pick up the violin. Thank God he did not listen to her. Davis's career began in 1944, studying at Juilliard and gigging around New York City. In 1959, Davis released his best album, Kind of Blue. Now, to demonstrate the influence of this album, 
it's actually regarded as a national treasure by the Library of Congress. Sorry, Nick Cage, you can't have it. Number five, Rafael Mendez. Coming in fresh and hot at number five is Rafael Mendez, the great Mexican trumpet and virtuoso. Mendez had a brilliant, silky smooth tone, great chops, and immaculate articulation. Though he's most easily recognized by his fat, rich vibrato that's as wide as an entire continent. Number four, Maynard Ferguson. Coming in at number four is legendary jazz icon, Maynard Ferguson. Words cannot begin to describe how many lives Maynard reached, especially young trumpet players. We all grew up idolizing him. He was a god. Now, we all know Maynard's upper register ability is unparalleled. His piercing double C's soar, yet they somehow remain musical and have so much feeling to them. They bring so much excitement to each composition and they're placed so tastefully within it that you just can't help but get excited. Maynard revolutionized the trumpet and brought joy and excitement and fire back into trumpet playing. Number three. Alan Vizzuti. Coming in at number three is Alan Vizzuti, the pinnacle of raw trumpet technique. Vizzuti performs things that just blows your mind and you're like, how in the world is this possible? Vizzuti's incredibly diverse playing is astonishing. Vizzuti effortlessly switches from classical to jazz like it's nothing. Alan Vizzuti regularly plays intervals over an octave in a musical context. How? Alan easily articulates from pedal tones all the way up to double C in the same phrase. Name someone else who can do that. A robot? Yeah, maybe, but it's still not going to be as good as Alan Vizzuti. What's most impressive about Vizzuti is his incredible showmanship. He makes you feel like he's truly happy that you're there in the audience. He often adds elements of comedy in his performances just to make your day. And that's so refreshing and such a change from all the stale performances you see where it just looks like the performer's not happy to be there. Thank you, Alan. Number two, Arturo Sandoval. Placing second and earning the silver medal is Arturo Sandoval. Is there anything Arturo can't play? No, really, is there anything Arturo can't play? Literally everything Arturo plays sounds beautiful and gorgeous. Arturo could play Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars and bring the most stoic, grown man to tears. Sandoval's awards speak for themselves. 10 Grammys, 6 Billboard Awards, and 1 Emmy Award. Arturo's tone is the fattest, richest tone imaginable. It's like draping a whale in silk. His sound is absolutely enormous. Arturo is simply a legend. Before we get into the best trumpet player of all time, go down in the comments and tell us who your favorite trumpet player is. Number one, Herb Alpert. Coming in as the best trumpet player of all time is Herb Alpert. But please, Herb sucks! You re All right, before you click away, I'm gonna explain this and drop some knowledge on you. Herb brought the trumpet to a massive audience and influenced millions to pick up the trumpet. That's irreplaceable, guys. Herb is pretty slept on. His articulation is immaculate, always crisp, and it's pretty impossible to replicate. Now, Herb has nine Grammys, 14 platinum albums, and 15 gold albums, selling over 72 million records worldwide. Herb is the only musician to ever reach number one on the US Billboard Top 100 as both a vocalist and an instrumentalist. That's right, Herb is the only one to hold that honor. The only one. That's right, a trumpet player, not the stereotypical guitarist. That is unbelievable, guys. However, in 1962, Herb released the Tijuana Brass's breakout single, The Lonely Bull, which reached number six on the top Billboard singles chart. Yes, that's right. A song recorded in Herb's garage became a top 10 hit. 
absolutely unbelievable. Soon after, Herb founded A&M Records. Yes, THE A&M Records. That's right, without Herb, we wouldn't have Herbie Hancock, Chet Baker, Chuck Mangione, or The Police. Without Herb, we never would have even heard these guys. Herb's success with the Tijuana Brass didn't end there. In 1965, Herb released two albums, Going Places and Whipped Cream and Other Delights. These albums skyrocketed his popularity, leading him to become a household name that everyone loved and enjoyed. In 1966, Herb achieved the most impressive feat imaginable. Herb outsold the Beatles, guys! That's absolutely insane. He outsold the most popular band of all time as a trumpet player. No one has ever even come close to something like that. He outsold the Beatles. You can't do that. How? This begs the question, who's the richest trumpet player of all time? That's right, Herb Alpert. His net worth is around $900 million. $900 million. That's eight zeros. He's richer than Dr. Dre and Jay-Z. He's the third richest musician in the world. That's absolutely insane. He's a trumpet player. He's not supposed to make money. Guys, Herb is almost a billionaire. A billionaire. Just a little trumpet player who followed his dream went that far. For his amazing musicality, unmatched influence, and unparalleled success as a trumpet player, Herb Alpert proudly earns first place as the best trumpet player of all time. Agree with the list? Disagree with the list? Did we miss somebody? Let us know! Comment down below! Congrats on making it to the end! You're one step closer to becoming the best trumpet player of all time. Now if you're new around here, we'd love to have you stick around. We post every single Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time Make sure to squash that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. And if you aren't part of our Snap Squad, you need to stop what you're doing and add me right up there on Snapchat. There's some pretty hilarious stuff that goes down on there. You cannot be the guy that missed out. Cheers, Bobros. Have a great summer. I will see you next week.